Well, thank you very much uh, to all our speakers for uh, taking us through that journey that's led to the creation of this dynamic database. A couple of questions right off the bat. Uh, Nancy, do you, uh, you talked about NP and K in your presentation. Do you also measure total solids, volatile solids content as well? Um, as we're going forward for this Minter database project, we are making an ideal data template. And yes, those items are included in that. So if a lab does test it and offers that, we do have a place to put it. That, so hopefully we can um, compare and look at those going forward. So we do have an area for both of those items, total solids and volatile solids. Great. Thank you. Um, I think Melissa or Nancy, I'll, I'll ask you this question. Does the ASABE analysis data dating back to 2005, is that manure data you pres presented, is that from manure storages or as excreted? I'll take that one. I just double checked here and looked at my notes and it's on table 19 as removed manure production and characteristics. So also there is as excreted that is also available, but this is as removed. Right. So check out table 19. Melissa, a question for you. Do you anticipate assigning a data quality indicator to identify in the manure database which values come from MAP certified versus non-certified labs? That's a good question. At the moment, we've only been reaching out to MAP or MAP program participants just because um, we have contact information that available, that information is available publicly through the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. So we have been working particularly with those labs. Great. Bob, a quick question for you. You mentioned in your presentation that the combustion method is perhaps a little more robust and is quickly replacing the TKN method in labs. Are there other reasons that you see this shift in nitrogen analysis techni techniques? Yeah, so the old TCAN method, which dates back to like the 1890s, uh, it uses vast quantities of sulfuric acid, requires a very specialized hood, and it's a kind of a tedious process. I mean, it probably takes a lab two to three hours per sample to process it. Obviously, they do these in bulk, bulk sets. The nitrogen combustion, you know, you can buy an instrument, plug it in, put the gases online, and you're running in a minute, and you have an answer every in three minutes, right? That that that's convenience, right? But they just don't quite have the ability to work the very low uh, total solid samples. So there we are. We got old technology still still hanging in there. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Does this database mean that we don't need to promote manure sampling anymore? No, that's definitely one of the things that we saw with some of that preliminary data is that the range is really, really quite wide, particularly because in some cases, you know, we're seeing swine data. We don't necessarily know if it's a nursery barn, if it's a finishing barn, so on and so forth. So we do see some ranges there, but um, sometimes they can we can actually see that interquartile range to the middle 50% of all samples. And this is just for the Midwestern region that I was showing can vary by 100%. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about nutrient management planning and you might be <laughs> under by half of what you thought you had, that can be really have really serious consequences for your crop production. So getting tests sampled is going to be really important going forward. But I think being able to show people that variability in all the data will be, help point us in that direction. Thank you. I will remind our participants too that if you do need to drop off here at the end of the hour, there will be a survey that comes up asking for your feedback on the webinar. So please take a few minutes to fill it out. It's, it's very brief. So Melissa, I think that leads us into the next question is, you know, so, so what are some of the other intended uses or what are some of the things that you think that this database will show if you look at the changes in manure of today versus previous evaluations? Um, what what do we anticipate seeing and, and do we have some reasons to expect some of those changes? I think one of the big things that we've heard people talk about, for instance, is differences in feed and diets. So we've seen, for instance, in the last two decades, a lot of people are adding phytase to swine and poultry diets. And we have seen that shift. I think Nancy showed that, that there is less phosphorus, for instance, 
in the menorah than compared to those earlier averages from ASABE and the Midwest Planner Service. So just things like that, you know, we hear about anecdotally and then now we can see it in the data too. And I think it's been really interesting talking to some of our nutritionists that I work with is they've, you know, talking about some of the complications that we have to deal with when we're thinking about land application. And then how does that, could we think about ways to change the diet? So having some of this data uh, regionally to be able to show, you know, maybe the upper Midwest tends to feed more DDGs than um, a Western United States, something like that. We'll be able to see some of these differences regionally and we might be able to explain them by diet. And it might be interesting to see if people adjust diets, you know, to start looking at how to reuse these nutrients more efficiently. Thank you. Bob, a question about the combustion process and something that I've been grappling with in some of my own research right recently is part of the reason for variation at low uh, dry matter levels due to loss of ammonium during the drying process before measuring total, total end? So, so this is an issue because labs who dry the samples are gonna drive off the ammonia, right? And so if you've got a sample, let's say it's three or 4% total solids and a third of the sample nitrogen is ammonia, you're probably gonna lose a percentage of that. The problem is you don't know what percentage you're losing. The new manure methods manual requires, says that all these methods are done on fresh samples. So whatever it is, it's never dry. You do a moisture content upon receiving, but the process is, the samples process wet through the entire analysis protocol. So that's how we get around it. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Nancy, in what you're seeing coming in so far for the database is pH commonly measured in manure samples. And that's not something we had looked at here, but it is another factor in our ideal data template is pH. So we will have that um, category to compare and look at in the future. If, if, they, it, if, if it's analyzed, yeah. Yeah, if it's analyzed by a lab, it could potentially be used by lab. That is a good point. I want to kind of chime in too that the data that is given to us by labs has to have been paid for by someone. So in that case, if like in the Midwest, we do not, there's some states, ours included, that does not use ammonium when thinking about nutrient management planning. They'll use total nitrogen instead. So there's a lot of samples that might not have ammonium attached to it because it just wasn't analyzed. Out in the Eastern part of the US where I've worked before, they do use ammonium for most of their nutrient management planning. So then you'll see a lot more of that data available. So it really is dependent on the region and what's kind of standard standard analysis for that area. Melissa, can you quickly uh, chime in on the timeline for the manure database uh, when it will be available for public use and the granularity that you anticipate with the data? I think initially we're planning on having aggregated information for each state. We would potentially at some point like to have information for um, the kind of first three digit zip code regions, but we have to have enough data to be able to do that first. Cause we wanna, again, for privacy issues, we wanna make sure that individual areas can't necessarily be identified individual farms or um, cooperators. We have found that like a lot of times farms aren't necessarily sending these in, they're ag professionals that are, they hired, that are hired for the farm or sending them in and they might put their address rather than the farm address, but you know, it's still at least we're getting closer to the region where the menorah was sampled. So we, there are gonna be some caveats with this data. 